Hey guys, what's happening? Thanks for tuning in, coming back, watching, hanging out. I appreciate it. Hope your day's going really well. I am in Luminar 4 again, of course, and I'm in the light tool today. And I was going to do a deep dive just on light tool, but there's so many components of it that I feel like it would actually be better to break it down. So I'd previously done um, the tone curve. You can see that video there. I've also done a video about white balance, which would be there. Today I'm going to talk about whites and versus highlights, and then also shadows versus blacks. I think a lot of times people will think of highlights and whites being kind of the same thing and uh, shadows and blacks being kind of the same thing, but they are different. And so I thought I would jump into that. So let's just hop into the photo. Okay, here we go. So this is an uh, older shot from probably about eight years ago I shot in Amsterdam, but I got some nice uh, kind of blown out parts of the sky, you know, nice, um, good for demo purposes, uh, parts of the sky here, uh, but it, it is recoverable and that's because it's a highlight. And so that's one of the things I want to talk about. Uh, when you get over here, I think most people think of highlights and, sh uh, and whites being the same, as I said before, shadows and blacks being the same. Uh, but there are some differences, and that is in the highlights and in the shadows, you can typically recover detail, whereas in the whites and the blacks, you cannot. Now, one of the things that uh, it comes in really handy here is the histogram, which you see up here. And there's a key, at least on a Mac. It may be different on a Windows, but if you hit the J key, the J key will activate these two little triangles up here. You can also click on them if you want to, but the J key is an easy on-off kind of hot key. And basically what that does is that will automatically show you hot and cold pixels. The hot pixels are basically the blown out or nearly blown out areas, and they're in red, as you can see. The cold pixels are the ones that are in dark blue. You probably don't really see any here, uh, but there is a little trick I'll show you or tell you, and that is there's uh, the Alt or Option key on a Mac. It's right between Control and Command. It's called Alt or Option on Windows. I don't know. Uh, and in fact, I don't know if this trick works on Windows either, but Here's what I wanted to show you is that with highlights, if you um, hold down the Alt or Option key, again, on a Mac, and then drag the highlights, you will automatically get a mask that will show up. And so as I'm dragging the highlights, you can see that they're starting to disappear. The light parts here are the highlights. And so you can see that the sky was fairly full of highlights, and as I'm going back and forth, it's uh, changing. And so that's pretty handy. And um, as I drag the highlights down, you can see the red starts to disappear in the photo, and basically what's happening is I'm recovering detail from the highlights and I'm getting control over them. Now the whites is really about setting your white point, and uh, you know it, it's um, I, I think I read on a blog somewhere a long time ago that it said that um, people think of whites and uh, highlights as being the same, as I said, and shadows and blacks being the same, and each of those is not the same. They're more like um, you know people think of them as being twins, and really they're more like cousins. Um, and I think that's a good analogy because um, highlights and whites impact the brighter parts of the photos uh, because that's where the highlights and the whites are. But they're not quite the same. So with the highlights there, I think I'm at negative 76. I think I've, tell you what, let me hit J key and get rid of that. Take that back down. So I was at negative 75, 76. So there you go. I think those look much better. Um, let me take the whites down now. I reset the highlights. If I take the whites down, I'm not getting recovery in this area of the sky like I was with the highlights. So one more time, let me show you. Look especially at this bright part of the sky, right? That's kind of where you're drawn anyway. So as I take that down, if I go negative 100, you can see I'm starting to recover detail in those highlights, right? So that's what it looks like. You can see like this little cloud and some of these smaller clouds that are starting to show up because I've recovered that. But with the whites, if I take that all the way down, I'm not recovering as much. Here's the other thing to be aware of, and that is when you drag the whites down, what you're doing is you're basically making your whites kind of gray. You can see the clouds have become kind of gray, and so let me reset that. Um, they got a little bit more of a blue tint there, but as I drag it this way, I'm setting the white point, and I'm basically saying the whites need to be this kind of color. So just be careful because um, I try not to drag my white slider too far because it does kind of muddy up the white colors, right? Of course. Uh, whereas if you go the other way, it's going to make more white, right? And so you're going to get more of a blown out photo. And let me reset that. And the same with highlights, right? You'll notice though, highlights at 100, not as blown out as the whites, right? So it's just interesting. Every photo is going to be different, but this is something I think that's important to keep in mind, that highlights and whites are cousins. They're not twins. They're similar, but yet different.
So what I'll often do is I'll hit the J key, I'll see how my highlights are, and then I'll start taking these down. Uh, and I'll leave that on. Generally, I think people will often edit to where maybe there's a little bit of these uh, like blown pixels, but not a whole lot. So, you know, I've taken this down quite a bit already. Even at negative 100, I don't have it uh, totally gone. Now, if I take the whites down, it has a little bit more of an impact. But as I said, the whites are starting to get kind of muddy. And I think it looks a little bit better actually just kind of leaving the whites at zero and maybe pulling the highlights back up to the, I think it was at negative 75 or something. Let me turn off the J so you can see. I think that looks fine. It doesn't like a, look like a big blown out part of the sky. I think it, it looks like totally normal actually. So that's something to keep in mind. Uh, and then the same for blacks and shadows. You can do the same Alt Option trick. So if I'm holding that Alt or Option key down and dragging shadows, you can see I get a mask. Now the mask is the opposite. The white is the stuff that I don't care about. Whereas these color parts as I go to the left are the deep dark shadows. And so I don't use that as much for that. And in fact, I don't often bring shadows down a whole lot. I might bring it down a tiny bit here. Um, maybe take the blacks down a little bit. Maybe bump the whites a tiny bit. Keep those highlights down. Um, and I've got a decently look, you know, a lit photo. There's the before and the after. I did a little bit of lens and geometry. Now the other thing to think about is contrast because contrast is the difference between the bright parts and the dark parts. So when you drag contrast, you're gonna accentuate those differences. So once again, let me turn on the, um, the J key, which again is the same as clicking these two little triangles in the histogram. And as I drag the contrast, you'll see that I'm getting a little bit more of that highlights back. And so this is where it becomes a bit of a dance between how much or you wanna lower the highlights and how much you wanna increase contrast, because that contrast is the difference between dark and light. So here I might come in and say, well, maybe I need to lift the shadow, or excuse me, the blacks a little bit. Maybe the shadows lift those a little bit more. Let me hit J so you can see that better. And all I'm trying to do is find the optimal balance uh, to, to suit my eye. There, there's no science to this. This is not a math equation where you input these values and you output a perfectly lit photo or anything like that. It's a delicate dance as I've talked about in a lot of my videos before, but highlights and whites are different. Um, shadows and blacks are different and you, you sort of got to massage them on every photo and at the same time keeping in mind what your contrast is going to look like and what kind of contrast you want in your photo because that has an impact on that as well. So when I'm editing a photo that's often what I do. I work on the highlights and shadows. If I need to I'll work on the whites and blacks. I'll add contrast and then I'll do this sort of delicate dance and then usually what happens is after I've done that in the light tool I'll bounce over to some other tools like maybe AI Enhance where I might come down here and say, all right, I wanna drag this a little bit, the Accent AI and see what I get because it does a good job of bringing up some of those darker tones without blowing out uh, the, the brighter tones. And so again, it's a dance. You don't have to just use the light filter with you know highlights and shadows and contrast and things like that. You can mix it with other things, of course, as you, I'm sure you already know. And that's it. And so I just want to talk about that. I, would, I do appreciate you watching. I'm going to come back around now and just finish editing this photo because I've been looking at it and there's so much I want to do to it. So I'm going to go do that next. Maybe I'll show you a video of how I edited this one, assuming I end up with something that I like, which I'm pretty sure I'm gonna. Um, so that's it, my friends. If you haven't yet subscribed, please do uh, hit that thumbs up button. Give me a like if you would. Let YouTube know that you like what I'm doing. And don't uh, hesitate to come back soon. I've got more planned and more coming. Also, let me know what else you'd like to be seen here. So I'll keep uh, doing videos. I've got a lot of things planned, but I'm always open to suggestions. So thank you for watching, tuning in, and hanging out. I appreciate it. See you soon, my friends. Have a great day. Take care, and adios.